Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to my very cheap Copart Audi TT. Now, buying something this cheap, there's certain things you've got to do, right? And the first thing for me was to clean it, which we did in the last episode with this car, to uncover anything that, well, might literally be hidden under the surface. And I think we got away with it. The car's cleaned up really nicely, and yes, it's not cosmetically perfect. The wheels could definitely do with a refurb. There's various bits of trim and bumper missing. The list does go on a bit. However, what's more important now to move on to, I think, is a mechanical clean or a mechanical inspection. And that's what we're doing today. I'm taking it for a full service at Audi, at an official Audi. Uh, the reason for that is because, well, it's not had a service for 25,000 miles or so. And although the records have been really good, I think now it makes sense to take it in for a major one. And I thought it would just be interesting to take a 475 quid Audi TT to an Audi main dealer for its service. By the way, the service that I was quoted is costing 366 pounds. So almost as much as the entire car. But I think this is a good idea. Let's get them to change all the bits. I've asked them to do a full inspection as well. I wanna see what they say about that exhaust at the back, because obviously that's bent and I don't quite know what's happened there. So anyway, it's gonna be really interesting. Not very far from me. So just a quick drive over there now. We'll see what they have to say. Now I realise this is probably the first time you've seen me drive the car and the reason for that is because I thought it would be good to get the mechanical stuff looked at before taking this on any sort of first drive video where I'm really seeing what the car can do. You may have noticed there there's a weird clicking noise that is the hazard light switch. It's a, a very common fault with these cars, as I found out. And well, if I'm ever to use the indicator, then every now and then that indicator sound just keeps playing over and over again. It's quite annoying with the radio on, you can't really hear it, but that'll be something down the line to look at fixing. I've also got an airbag light, which is to do with the connection under the seat. Now, through the service records of this car, there's been, I think, three or four attempted repairs of that. There goes the indicators. And so that's obviously a recurring issue too. But despite those few shortcomings, uh, basically I'm, I'm really enjoying this car and it's actually a fabulous thing to drive, irregardless of what I paid for it. It's brilliant. And despite some confusion, I think on the first video, and I didn't actually know when I was filming it, this is the 1.8, but it's the 180. Lots of people thought it was the 150, but it's actually not, according to Audi. It's the 180, but with the five speed, and it is forward wheel drive or front wheel drive, which I didn't know when buying the car, but then I didn't want to buy the car, so I sort of didn't really research it at all until I drove it. And the way I actually found out it was front wheel drive was by putting my foot down. So yes, it is the 180, which is good news. And I have to say, third gear, 2000 RPM, it hits the boost and then it just really goes. I'm very surprised at how quick it feels. Um, I wasn't expecting that at all, especially when I found out that it wasn't the 225. I thought it was going to be sluggish as, as anything, but that's not the case. But yes, if you would like to see a full driving review of this car, it will be coming very soon once this service is, is done and I can have some peace of mind. So if you don't want to miss out on that, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. You can turn on notifications as well and then you'll know when I do upload, because at the moment it's a little bit all over the place. I don't really know when I'm uploading, but that's just the way it's going at the moment. So yes, I would really appreciate a subscribe. And if you're liking the Audi TT content, do drop a, a like and a comment on this video, because that's a very easy indication for me to, to see if you're enjoying it. Well, here we are then, here's the 475 quid TT at Audi of Aylesbury. I've just been in to drop the car off and uh, well, what I didn't realise is that 366 quid didn't even include spark plugs, that was like a basic service. So that's horrendous, I'm not that interested in that. But what he did say when I explained it to him that this was an auction car and I just wanna see you know, what it needs doing. He said, well, why don't we do an inspection first before you spend any money and then we'll give you a call and let you know what it's like. So anyway, we'll leave it here. We'll wait for them to call me later on this morning or this afternoon. But yeah, that was actually a very good experience. Very nice guy in there. He said, don't spend any money yet then. Let's do an expense before you tell you what it's like. 
and then we'll see if it's worth doing a service. So pretty happy with that so far. Okay, welcome back everyone. Well, the sun has come out. I've just been over to pick up the Audi from Audi of Aylesbury <laughs> with some interesting results as you can probably deduce from the title of this video. I'm just pulling him back home now. Let's sit down and, uh, well, look at what they've sent me because this is, this is quite funny. Okay, well, so interestingly, the first thing is that I got a text and an email from Audi to say um, your health inspection is ready for you to view. I didn't realise this. I, I know lots of places do do this, but I didn't realise I would get this. Uh, they sent a full video of the car. It's two minutes or so of a mechanic walking around underneath it and pointing out all the things that he's put on his report. So, yeah, Audi sent me this video here which was really interesting actually, a couple of minutes long and uh, going through all of the things that are listed underneath and the prices next to them. Now, they first recommended that the brake fluid needed changing at a cost of 83 pounds and 32 pence. And these prices are inclusive of VAT. Um, that seems fairly reasonable, I guess. Service history, brake fluid change every due every two, two years. So it's worth getting the brake fluid done, of course. Uh, Cambo and water pump due apparently they wanted 743 pounds and 67 pence now I know that it's not due because in this stack of receipts here which by the way we could go through all of the history of this car I would have to make a whole video because if I just grab this folder I think I've picked up most of it these are all of the receipts for work have been done to this this car and critically in this uh, pack of receipts there are two instances of the cam belt being changed i think the first one was somewhere in the 50k region i think it was 57k and the last cam belt was done at 112k now i believe they're due every 80k according to audi so um they obviously don't have a record of it being done because neither of them were done at audi but this car's not due another come out until 172. And that's bad maths, isn't it? 192k, and it's on around 138. So the cambo is not due, but they did uh, recommend it get done cambo and water pump uh, for £743.67. A load of coolant stuff was done a couple of years ago. I'm not sure if the, the water pump was included in that, but at least at the moment, everything cooling wise is working fine. The next one was pretty steep. Visual check of brake discs, they revealed that the discs at the front are heavily lipped. Now, I was a little bit surprised by that, actually, because the feel of the brakes in this car is really good, actually. It does stop really well. Um, they don't feel at all like they're low, but they are. Um, but £480.30 they wanted to replace the front brake discs only. That is extortionate. Next up, there's some warning lamps on the car, as we know about. Well, actually, there's only one. It's the airbag light. And that is uh, £144 they wanted just to investigate that further. Now, again, from this amazing, basically, novel that I've got, because essentially that's what service history is. It's a, a story. And I've been reading it intently. And I've noticed in here there's, I think, three, if not four instances of the airbag light being sorted now i think i mentioned that to you guys on the drive to audi uh, this morning but from each of those uh in the report it says we investigated an airbag light and fixed a connection under the driver's seat so there's obviously some sort of issue or common thing with this car where there's a connection goes weird underneath the driver's seat which causes an airbag light now audi want 144 pounds to investigate that further I think if I do a little bit of research and have a rummage under this seat here, I'm sure I can reset that that light or at least clear it, maybe to get it through an MOT in, in a month's time or so. But interesting, they wanted £144 there for, for diagnostics. Now, I'd booked him for a 366 I think it was, pound service. However, when I got to Audi this morning, they said that that didn't actually include the spark plugs. The major service is £640. And 33 pence which does sound a bit more like a main dealer main service so they recommended that being done but again my last service is at 112k and on the dashboard i think it says service due in 9,000 miles or something so i do need to check the uh intervals in the in the handbook but maybe it's something like 30 
uh, minor or, or sorry 20 minor and 40 major because the last one was done at 112 and it's not asking for another one for another 9,000 miles but it probably wouldn't be the worst idea to get it fully serviced but at Audi I didn't want to spend 640 pounds to have it serviced I think I can do the filters and the oil myself. I could probably do the spark plugs myself as well, but at least I could find somewhere cheaper. This says it all. They wanted £62.30 for the wiper blades to be replaced. Now that is probably something I could do with my backside. Apparently I have a side light issue. The offside rear is inoperative or not working. They say it requires a wiring check and they want £274.78. Now that is obviously something that needs sorting because a car won't pass an MOT if one of the side lights is not working. However, on doing inspections of the car myself, the side lights seem to be working fine for me. So very, uh, very strange that one. But again, £275 just to just to check that is so much money. So what was the total of the items on this repair list from Audi? I hear you ask. £2,698.70. Oh, and that doesn't actually include everything. That total I gave you of around £2,700, that doesn't even include these last three, which are all suspension bits, because it says under all of them, the parts are no longer available from Audi. But they've listed that the drop links on the offside front are perishing. The coil spring on the near side rear is heavily corroded, so a new pair of them would be needed. And near side front track rod end is perished. Now, Having had my experience with the Jag on replacing a few suspension bits, I feel like I might be able to have a go at this myself. I've gone online to a website and found all of these parts, which would be drop links for both, uh, uh, on, the, both on the front, two rear springs, and uh, both front track rod ends. I found all of that for around 90 quid, like for like parts that I could I could buy for this car. So I'm quite tempted to order those and fit them myself now obviously if i do do that i'd like to make a video doing it so i want to hear from you guys if you would like to see me do that or whether i should just take it to a garage and get them to do it because i think it'd be really hard work for me to do the suspension but i think i might be able to tackle it and so if i do it i'd, I'd love to make a video but i only really want to do that if you guys are interested so so let me know and then the only other item on here which uh, is a little bit concerning, is they put major oil leak, which requires further investigation, £270. Now, I did notice when I picked this car up, I'm not sure I included it in any of the content, that there was some oil residue uh, on the under trays when you look underneath the car. It's quite clear to see. So I had cleaned that off and um, been watching it. It's been sort of three weeks I've had this car now, I think. And sort of been monitoring it and I'd also checked obviously the oil level with the dipstick and been monitoring that too and not really any change I've not noticed in the dipstick any oil being lost maybe a little bit of, of, of mess but nothing major but they've put major leak now I've checked their video and I spoke to them there's nothing physically literally dripping right in front of them just because of the state of the under trays they they said it was a major leak but obviously that was done over a long period of time and I wasn't able to clean up all of it so although they put major oil leak, which requires further investigation, I'm not too concerned, especially for a car that costs so little. I've been checking the dipstick and over a period of about a week, it hadn't lost any oil at all. So I'm not too worried about that, but they wanted £270 just to investigate that further. They did also give me this sheet of paper, which is quite uh, useful because it breaks down everything that's on that list on my phone but they've also given me a breakdown of the tires as well. So my rears are both 55% worn and my fronts are 31 and 39% worn. I was thinking then about replacing the tires because they're, they're all sort of budgets and they're all wrong as well and they're not even. So I thought about changing the tires, but then I realized the wheels are also really curbed. So I wonder if somewhere I can maybe just find a replacement set of wheels and uh, well maybe on some new or, or matching at least tires as well so i might have a look at that although no promises because it's one of those things isn't it with a car like this you never really know how much how far you want to go with it but yeah we'll, we'll see the only thing actually that's in the video if you listen very closely maybe i'll try and play it for you but if you listen very closely and it's not on 
it's not on the report and it's not also on the report on my phone uh, the technician referenced the exhaust so he did actually notice that the exhaust was a bit off center and I was a bit worried that it's because it had had a knock or a bang maybe it had bottomed out really badly and something had bent under there or if it had, had a rear end that had just bent the sort of last part of the exhaust but he said it was the hangers the exhaust hand hangers I think a couple of them had rusted away so on the one hand well I know how to to fix it but Basically, I'm, I'm happy that it is just a case of some hangers being a bit corroded. Making our way down the exhaust pipe, you can see these clamps here. This clamp here is quite heavily corroded. I recommend you get that replaced. The exhaust is quite heavily corroded as well. And then the hanger on the rear. So needless to say, with all of this, I actually said to them, thank you very much. That's really helpful for that health inspection, but let's just leave it because there's a number of things that want doing. I thought let's not pay to have it serviced because we've had to pay 640 quid just to have it serviced. And then, you know, if I do get the car up on a, a ramp or jack it up to do some suspension, I might discover some other things as well. So I decided not to do anything. So I haven't actually had anything done to the car, but I feel like that was extremely invaluable in just getting a bit more information about what the state of the thing is like. And I don't know about you, call me crazy. Most of the stuff on here, I mean, so warning lamp, airbag light, front brake discs, uh, cam belt and water pump, which I know the cam belts have been done. Brake fluid, that's definitely something that will need sorting that I can't do, I don't think. Oil leak, as we just discussed, not a big deal. Um, it could be, it could turn out to be something quite bad, but I've got no real indication to believe that at the moment. Some light issues, some suspension issues. Nothing that's going to cause the car to veer off the road at any given moment. So actually, although the big headline of the bill from Audi being 2,700 quid, not including the suspension stuff, that would have taken it well over three grand with labour. Uh, actually, I think this is quite a good outcome. I don't know what you think, but surely that, that's, that's pretty good. So yeah, my plan going forward then, I've got some brakes actually being sent by a company for the front and rear. So new brake discs, new pads all round. I should be able to fit those myself. Then the suspension may be the same thing. I'd like to order that suspension that I found if you guys want to see it and maybe I'll fit that myself. Otherwise, potentially I'll take it to a garage for that and just get it done off this series and off the channel. Otherwise, brake fluid, when I do the brakes, I'll find somewhere to take it in and get the brake fluid done too. The wipers I can replace myself, although actually the action of them seems fine to me. They're not they're not, not clearing the screen and they're not rubbing, so they don't really need doing, but I can replace those. And yeah, that's really it. The side light, well, like I say, it seems to be working fine when I check it, so I'm not really sure about that. But that was, I have to say to Audi of Aylesbury, firstly, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know what the name of the chap that I was dealing with was called, but he was extremely professional, extremely welcoming. I've never really had a dealer experience like that where I walk in and sit at a desk and talk to someone. I felt very out of place, especially turning up in a co-part car. He was very, very professional. He, he was the one that suggested, let's do the health check first before spending any money, which made me feel very comfortable because I was a little bit worried about spending money on this car and not really knowing what I was spending money on, if that makes sense. So a uh, huge, huge shout out to Audi of Aylesbury. Um, really genuinely wanted to say I was very impressed with the service. And obviously I'm not gonna go and spend 480 quid for them to do my front brake discs. That is an abhorrent amount of money to ask for something like that. But regardless, the, the customer service, I'd say very good and uh, yeah, who knows, in the future, if I was buying a car or whatever, I would definitely consider going to them. So thank you to them for making me feel comfortable because I do get a little bit daunted going into places like that and, you know, not knowing what they're going to say or how they're going to treat you, especially when turning up in something cheap. But they certainly didn't categorise me or anything. They treated me very well. So huge thanks to Audi of Aylesbury. And yeah, thanks again to you guys for watching. Now, I know I've been teasing it for so long, but the next video you see on this channel will be me driving the car. Now that I know that there's nothing that's gonna literally fall off, yes, the suspension stuff needs looking at, and yes, the brakes need changing for sure, we'll take this on a proper drive. The weather's good for the next week or so, so I'll get it out into the countryside. Maybe tomorrow I'll film it 
and the next video you'll see on this channel now, or at least the next video you'll see with this Audi, will be me taking it on its first proper drive. So if you've been enjoying the series so far, stay tuned for that. Make sure you're subscribed if you're one of my 75% of regular viewers that have still not subscribed. That really, really helps. I'd love to get this channel to 100,000 subscribers. That would be amazing. Give the video a thumbs up again if you like the TT content. It really helps. And drop a comment below on whether you'd like to see me do some work to it myself, whether it be fiddling with the airbag light, doing the brakes, or doing the suspension. And any other ideas you've got for this car in the future. But you can probably work out what my plan is for it in the next few weeks or so. I'll leave that one with you. Thanks again so much, and I'll see you very, very soon. Thank you.